A wide cross-section of society was present at the National Emergency Management Advisory Committee meeting held on Monday, 16th March, to address COVID-19 concerns. Leader of the Opposition, Philip J. Pierre, provided a number of advisories to the ruling government in addressing the economic drawbacks anticipated as a result of the global health threat. We also should look at what role the National Insurance Corporation can play. In terms of sick benefits, we have to look into that and see how we can use the NIC within the law, how we can use the NIC funds to assist our people. As I insist, it's about, it's about people. And our party will, will support government and parliament if it comes to changing existing rules or legislation to support these kind of initiatives. Meanwhile, the economic fallout of the pandemic was the focus for Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce, Brian Luizzi. As it stands, Luizzi notes that the supply of cleaning products has been disrupted. Chamber members will on their part ensure that all measures are put in place to protect employees and the public as we continue to serve them. The Chamber, however, wishes to inform that there appears to be challenges in the availability of sanitizing and cleaning products. In that context, we again suggest that government should provide all possible support to local firms able to manufacture these products or convert these op their operations to produce these goods, as these are needed not just locally but regionally. This is critical because USA suppliers are minded to redirect these resources to their situation on the ground and these governments could intervene to decide on where those supplies go. I point out that so, some local producers may be considered for such support, including Toilin, Natmed, Senusha Distillers, and Chemico. We recommend government needs to give active and aggressive support to these local efforts to produce the cleaning agents locally. Louisi also recommends the deployment of security forces to discourage unscrupulous attacks on distribution services in case of shortages. Moreover, Prime Minister Alan Shastny emphasized the importance of conservation of vital commodities. That a word that needs to become commonplace is rationing. I'm not hearing that word. It's almost like people are expecting that exactly what their lifestyle was yesterday is what that lifestyle needs to be over the next couple of months. That is not realistic. And if, in fact, we are going to be our brother's keepers, it means that we all have to share. So this idea of people rushing to the grocery stores to go and buy out stuff, that mechanisms will be put in place in order to make sure that we have adequate supplies. The meeting also provided a forum for varied groups to present their queries, concerns, and recommendations. President of the National Council of and for Persons with Disabilities, Murphilus James, drove home the need for inclusivity. And especially persons with physical disabilities who are bedridden, who are at home, who are isolated, who do not have the ability to go out to a supermarket, to take a queue, to purchase things, and who are fully reliant on others. This also has implications if a quota is instituted in supermarkets, if you determine how many items someone is allowed to purchase. How do you verify that they are not purchasing it on behalf of vulnerable members of their community? So there is just so much that we need to address and put in place now to ensure that the risks are not magnified as we move along. James also called for inclusivity in arrangements for communication for the differently abled. Furthermore, according to Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George, a Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, team will be arriving on island later this month to review plans and make necessary revisions and recommendations. She also added that approval for funding for equipment and supplies has been granted by the World Bank. Solaj Alfred, HDS News Force.